Now, it's uh, an important anniversary today, the 5th of July, because back in 1954, 60 years ago, the BBC was preparing for its very first television news bulletin to go live. Things have changed, haven't they? Back then it was, what, 22 minutes long, and even better than that, you couldn't see the presenter. <laughs> Unfortunately for you, 60 years on, we live in an age of rolling news where you can see the presenters. Of course, we have robotic cameras, complicated graphics, and correspondents who file from across the globe. Well, back then, the presenter would have been wearing a pretty black tie, even though they couldn't be seen, and they were fixed behind a microphone. Today, due to technology, we thought it was a good opportunity to, uh, well, to give you a bit of a tour and see what a modern uh, news studio and news gallery look like. So, uh, see you in a minute. ta, -ta. <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you. Here are some of those cameras Naga was mentioning. Uh, nobody behind them. No cameramen or women, just all controlled from the gallery by remote control. We'll have a look at that in a moment. And here's Kevin, our floor manager who's making sure we behave on the sofa. Morning, Kevin. Absolutely. Busy day? Busy day, yeah. We've had a few guests uh, and lots of OBs. So, it's, yeah, it's been a fairly busy morning. It's ticked over. And you have to bring people in and make sure they're on the right yeah, side. And make sure they behave themselves and they're on the right side of, the, uh, of your the presenters. Have we been good? Uh, yeah, in the main. <laughs> <laughs> let's stick with that. Uh, let's come out here as well, because uh, when we used to be at Television Centre in London, uh, the studio was what well, felt like miles from the production area. But here in Salford, since we moved here a couple of years ago, we walked right out into the newsroom. And uh, here on the wall is a reminder of some of the days of, of BBC News, the history of BBC News. You've got a picture there, Moira Stewart, the moon landings. But here we've got uh, a picture from the very first edition of Breakfast, 30-something years ago, with Frank Boff and Selena Scott. And here in the newsroom are some very excited people, because these guys have been up all night, our production team. Morning. Morning. And they're about to go to bed. In an hour's time, you will all be asleep. Yeah. <laughs> They've been, when we come in in the morning at, what, 4.30, and we feel tired and sorry for ourselves, then we see these guys who've been up all night setting up the guests and doing the graphics and the editing and all of that, um, and then we realise that we're the lucky ones. So they're going to bed and probably back in tomorrow night to do it all over again. And this is the gallery. This is uh, the technical hub. So out there, the journalism, in here, the technical stuff. See all the screens there. We've got uh, what, 60 or something screens that they're watching, sources from all over the world, pictures coming in, correspondents, reporters ready to tell us about what's going on. Uh, David's here doing the sound, so he's monitoring this microphone and all the others at the moment. Morning. Morning. You look like a DJ there. And uh, let's see what's uh, going on here. Look, Richard. Well, Richard's not been here 60. You've been here 40 years, BBC News. 40 years, yes. How's it changed in that time? A lot. Yeah? Yes. I, I wasn't working in black and white days, but I just missed it. And, and tell people what you're doing here today. Cause... Well, I route all the sources outside of the studio into the gallery and uh, also control the cameras, such as there's Nagger and... There's Sit up straight, Nagger. And Sorry. that is me controlling the camera. <laughs> That's you, so you're controlling those cameras we showed yes. people a moment ago. Indeed. I suppose that's the thing Richard was saying, that uh, you know, technology has changed what we do so much. You know, we can go live anywhere within moments these days. So Emma there is, is producing this morning's programme, so you're in charge of the journalism. I am. I am, and also the timing. So, John, I think it's about time for you to hand to that VT, please. That's the politest way of saying shut up, I think. So uh, let's have a look back, shall we, at uh, how news has changed over those 60 years. Jim, our director this morning, is... What you, what, show us what you do when we play a piece. Stand by, come to line A and run A and mix. Here is an illustrated summary of the news. The Queen received the Right Honourable Sir Anthony Eden MP in audience this morning and offered him the post of Prime Minister and First Lord of the Treasury. This is a block of privately owned flats in the twilight slum clearance area of Hackney. How many of you use that bath? Four of us, and then I lend it to other people as well. The death of John F. Kennedy happened in Dallas at 25 past 12. I've seen two wounded men carried along the street in the last five minutes, but I don't even know whether they're Americans, Arvin, or Viet Cong. Less than 30 seconds, VT3. That's super. Blue super cue ball. The Deutschmark at the centre tonight of a European money crisis. It's 6.30, Monday, January the 17th, 1983. You're watching the first edition of BBC Television's Breakfast Time. 
the six o'clock news from the BBC with Sue Lawley and Nicholas Witchell. Good evening. The headlines from the BBC World Service. News can break anywhere in the world at any time. John Simpson, BBC News, Johannesburg. The BBC's new W1 building in the heart of London is spectacular. It's a view that we share with our audience every day, but today a unique moment with a very special royal guest. The Queen has formally named the Royal Navy's largest ever warship at a ceremony in Fife. A bottle of whiskey was smashed on the hull of the ship, named in her honour. But now BBC One, it's time for the news where you are. Have a good night. Sixty years in two minutes. BBC News celebrating its anniversary today. I tell you what, I don't normally see this side of things. It's astonishing when you actually see it up close. Uh, Nagy, you should try it sometime. Let's hand back to Nagy. You've got a special guest. I do. We're not usually allowed in that part of the um, studio, in that part of the office, really, Jonathan. And I think that's, there's a good reason for that. Let's go to our central London studio. There is a man who has seen plenty of change in television news. It's a familiar face to you all, I'm sure, BBC correspondent, former BBC correspondent, Martin Bell. Martin, good morning. Good morning. Um, tell us, what do you think? What are the biggest changes you've seen? 33 years in the business you've had. Well, they're mostly, they're mostly technical. I had to say, when I started in Alexandra Palace, we actually had a, 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 a robot cameras. Uh, but it tells you something of the, the culture of the place, that, that, that the bar was twice the size of the studio. And we were all trying... <laughs> if you listen to those early voices, it's all very officer class, isn't it? And I think one of the good things that's happened over the years is, the, is there's more diversity. We are, we are more committed. You don't now say, on the one hand this, on the other hand that, only time will tell. And there have been some terrific changes. Some for the better, some for the worse. I don't like rolling news. I think it shows more than it knows, and its, its motto ought to be never wrong for long. But you've got some terrific people, so have the other networks. So I think it's a, it's a mixed record, but it's a, been a fascinating 60 years, and I've only, I was only on it for about 35 of them. Just 35, eh? <laughs> um, what, did, what about, let's talk about foreign um, coverage, foreign news coverage, um, something you're very interested in, of course. Uh, I think we've got some serious problems at the moment. Everything changed after 9-11. After Up till then, you saw stuff from Vietnam, Bosnia, Croatia, whatever. Well, the, the, the greatest risk you faced was being caught in the crossfire. Now, Western reporters, not only Western reporters and technicians, are being, are being, uh, are, are being targeted, uh, ransomed. And uh, what's happened is that the journalists have withdrawn from the real world. You don't see much. You've got no idea what's going on, for instance, in much of Iraq at the moment. And it's become a bit uh, inauthentic. Um, also, Martin, I mean, we've seen the way we cover foreign um, stories changing. We've also seen the way we cover stories in general and the way that people access news. Technology has played a massive part in this, hasn't it? Yes, but we don't know what to believe. I mean, the, the modern... We used to report wars among the people from being among the people ourselves. The, 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 the people who do it now, it's not, no fault of theirs. They're often stuck on borders uh, showing unverifiable video and you don't know if it's authentic or not. So, in a way, I, I fear that a new dark age is upon us. The dark age in what sense? In that, in that we have this fantastic technology, but it's got so dangerous to work in so many countries that people have, have, have withdrawn to rooftops, what I call rooftop television and, and, and fortified green zones, and they can't get out and about as much as we used to. Martin, it's been good to talk to you. It's been good to get some insights from you into how television reporting has changed. Thanks very much for coming on to BBC Breakfast. It's only fair, really, that uh, we share some, well, well, some more behind-the-scenes stuff. We've been showing some of our colleagues in their early days of their BBC News careers. Welcome to Working Lunch. We've got a new look and a couple of new faces. Another bad day for your shares, though. We'll bring you the latest. Plus. Well, today, Newswest isn't just delivering news. We're also delivering letters. The Conservatives have always been the biggest political group here at Bristol University and they've produced some pretty big names like... I'm glad your ties have improved. Do you think they have? 
<laughs> Shame about the hair. If you want to see some more familiar faces, go to our Facebook page. That's it from breakfast for today. Thanks for joining us this Saturday morning. Roger and Steph will be with you tomorrow morning from 6. Have a lovely day. Have a great time. Bye-bye.